Welcome to Richter's Videos. We're pleased to present this short video to help you discover a whole new world of herbs and veggies at Richter's. I'm Conrad Richter, president of Richter's Herbs. We're standing in the back field of a Richter's property, where more than 25 years ago, my father, Otto Richter, planted dozens of varieties of herb seeds. These were old seeds that were left over from the seed operation. They were substandard, they could no longer germinate at the standard required for sale, but they still germinated a bit. He plowed the field and he seeded these old seeds and he wanted to see how well these herbs would grow and how they would survive the test of time. Now, more than 25 years later, Many of those herbs are still growing in this field. Many have carved out a permanent place in this landscape. Let's take a walk through the field and see what we can find. This is mugwort, Artemisia vulgaris. This herb is, uh, is used as a culinary herb for rich meats, like rich poultry and game oily meats. Why? Because it has a bitter principle that stimulates that digestive system. When used as a seasoning, mugwort prevents stomach upset and helps the body to assimilate nutrients. It is also a medicinal herb used to treat gout, rheumatism, and lack of appetite. Mugwort is a hardy perennial. It can survive uh, down to at least zone three in Canada and uh, it grows quite tall. It can get up to four or five feet. This is the a branch from last year's growth and this is the new growth coming back from from the root system. Here we are in a part of the field where we've just made an amazing discovery. Here is a patch of Greek oregano that has survived over 25 years of the Canadian winters. I remember when we first got Greek oregano, my dad brought it back from Greece, a little bit of seed that he collected, and we were one of the first to have the true oregano seed uh, in, in, in all of North America. Prior to that time, a very close relative of this, the same species, had been sold as oregano but had no flavor. It was what we call today common marjoram. So my, my father brought this seed back, but what we discovered was that most of that seed generated plants that were not hardy in Canada. This one I'd never seen it up until this moment and walking through the field has formed a patch that clearly has survived 25 years. It is incredible, it must be incredibly hardy to have survived all that time to the extent that it can compete against the weeds that have since moved in. And as I smell this, it has an intense, beautiful scent and flavor of Greek oregano. This is an incredible find. I'm standing in a patch here of blue flax and a herb from our catalog. These were seeded in, a, in the field and have slowly established themselves producing seeds, producing new plants, and going through the cycle of producing seeds. Uh, flowers and then seeds. So you can see a beautiful patch here of the blue flax. Flax uh, is an important medicinal plant in the herb world. The seeds are ground and uh, produced in, uh, to make a meal that is applied to wounds that are infected and helps to draw the poisons and the, and the, uh, out of the wound and then speed the healing process. Of course, flax is important for flax oil, and the special flax called the fiber flax, which is a very close re uh, relative of this, is used to make the flax 
linen fiber. So this is a very special plant, and as you can see, it's beautiful. And how wonderful it is that it can propagate and multiply on its own. Here's some chives uh, that has established itself in this field in the back, back of Richter's property. As you can see, it's the, the regular onion chives with the blue flowers. Chives is a perennial herb, very hardy to at least zone four. And over the years, this chives and many others in this field have taken root and are competing very well against the native grasses and some of the weeds that have established themselves in this field uh, more than 25 years after it was originally planted with the leftover seeds by my father. And of course you can go out into the field and grab one of these flowers, hold it at, at the bottom of the flower head, and pull the blue florets away. And these are fantastic for sprinkling on a spring salad with a lovely onion chives flavor and adds wonderful color to your salads. And here we have Echinacea, also known as the purple coneflower. Here's, some, here's a plant here, here's another one here, and another one here. And this is last year's flower and stem, and another one here. Later on in the summer, this will produce a flower and stalk with a beautiful, characteristically beautiful purple cone flower with a gold uh, disc in the center. For Native Americans, Echinacea was an important medicinal herb used to ward off colds, flus, and infections. Today, Echinacea is well known for its immunostimulant properties. It strengthens the body's own defense system, helping it to fight viruses and bacteria. Prepared remedies are now found in herb shops and drug stores everywhere. It's an incredibly hardy plant. It is native from southern Ontario all through the prairie states. And there's a number of different species. This species happens to be Echinacea purpurea. Most people didn't realize that it was a medicinal herb. Now, of course, we appreciate its, its medicinal properties and many people dig up the roots and use, it, use those roots to make tinctures, their own tinctures, which they'll use during the winter months, especially during the cold and flu season. Now we have cowslip plant that has survived after 25 years. It is the Primula varus of a famous herb from England. And as you can see, it produces a beautiful, dense clump. The flowers are a, it's a little bit past the prime. It's now going to seeds. Earlier on, it would have had beautiful yellow flowers. What a wonderful surprise as we walk through this field and stumble on this clump that has now established itself. And I can see as I look around, there are little plants established, uh, uh, starting to take hold in other parts of the field, such as this one here. Here we have tansy. It has established itself in a small clump here, in this part of the field. Here you can see the ladder-like leaves, what's known in botany as composite leaves. And it is, it is competing very well against all the native plants that have moved into this field. Later on in summer, they will have uh, a nice showing of yellow button flowers. This is the Sweet William, Dianthus barbatus. This is, a, this is a hardy biennial that has persisted in this field after 25 years. I remember my dad 
seeded this one and the whole field was just a light with colors of the sweet williams. Here you can see the bright uh, red colors, red pink colors with a little bit of orange and this one over here you can see the white with the purple uh, markings. It comes in such a kaleidoscope of colors and what a sight it was in those first few years when my dad planted these more than 25 years ago. But yet, I'm still finding them persisting in this field, competing against the native plants uh, that have moved in. Sweet William is, a, is of course in a, a long time cottage flower plant. But it is also a herb because the flowers have a wonderful scent and can be used as edible flowers in salads. This is a patch of yellow bed straw that has established itself in the field. You can see it extends right from here well over there about six feet in diameter as a big patch. It's forming the dense clumps and is managing to compete very well with the native plants and wild plants of the area. The leaves are characteristically arranged in what's called whorls, arranged up and down the stem. Later on, when these, these shoots rise up, they will go to bloom and produce a riot of orange, uh, of yellow flowers. It'll make an impressive display. Yellow bed straw is important as a dye plant. With different mordants, it can produce colors ranging from orange, yellow, and even red. Here we are in a patch of Campanula, both the white and the blue ones. And they have established a, a stable population that is reseeding itself and slowly spreading and is competing well against the local plants, the native grasses and the weeds that are coming in. This shows you, when you think about it, how adaptable plants are. They slowly change over the generations to adapt to the local conditions. And this very process of evolution can happen in your own garden. In fact, many commercially valuable new varieties first originated and were first found and discovered in the backyards, backyard gardens, in the fields and farms. I encourage everyone who is growing herbs and growing plants and vegetables to always keep their eyes open to look for distinctive new traits and look for plants with greater hardiness, the ability to uh, different colors, the ability to compete against wild plants. Any of these characteristics may become valuable. At Richter's, it's not just a garden, it's a whole new world. For herb plants, seeds, veggies, and more, visit us at richters.com or call 1-800-668-4372.